Now, opera singers can be categorized by the kind of voice and musical range they have. Women are sopranos, they have a high voice. Uh, and women with a lower voice are mezzo-sopranos or contraltos. Men with a high voice are tenors. If men have a very, very, very high voice that sounds like a lady's voice, they are known as countertenors. They are very rare. Uh, men with a lower voice are baritones. We then go down the scale to bass baritones. And when you really hit rock bottom, we have bassos. And they really have low voices. Most bassos can go lower than you would believe possible. And many of the bassos that you see in opera are very large, round men. <laughs> And I'm not sure if they need to be large and round to create the chamber in which the notes hit the cellar, but that seems to be the rule. Now, there are some customs or conventions that we associate with opera, things that usually happen. The heroine is usually a soprano. The hero is usually a tenor. That's not happening in today's opera, because Figaro is not a tenor. The villain of the opera is usually a baritone. And um, in The Marriage of Figaro, we have several sopranos, we have a basso, and we have a baritone, and we have a lot of smaller singing roles. And these are known as comprimario parts. Um, like plays, operas are divided into acts. Sometimes an act is divided into scenes. Since this is an Italian opera, uh, you can listen for some Italian words, and you're going to hear, Occello! What do you think Occello means? Oh, heavens, or ciel. You're going to hear Il Paggio. And Il Paggio is going to refer to a young boy in the opera, Cherubino. Cherubino is a page. Okay, there's another uh, word that you should probably know. L'amore. L'amore. L'amour. L'amour. It's really the same in the three languages, and it's a lovely word. Okay. What does it mean?